What if I told you that landscape sketching doesn't have to be hard? In this video, we're going to be doing some micro thumbnails to build up our scene before applying our simple five step process to create a really lovely postcard size or thumbnail sized sketch using our inks and our watercolors. This is about minimalist sketching. This is using things like visual cues, sketching shortcuts and just four colors. So we'll be using four really simple colors. And frankly, you could do it with even two colors, just a blue and a yellow, and you could create this whole work of art. We'll of course be interrupted by Betty a few times. Um, and if you don't know who Betty is, then you haven't been watching this channel enough, but you'll find out soon. Um, and like that, I think we're ready to take a really simple and lovely approach to our landscapes. Do join in, sketch along. Let me know in the comments what you think of these kinds of processes. And especially if you have tips for improving or favorite colors that you would like to see used in these kind of minimalist styles. If you do want to see more of this kind of thing, I have two really exciting projects coming out. One I can tell you about, which will be on sketchloose.co.uk, my website. I've got a new course um, similar to my previous courses but all about landscapes. The other is a secret, is an enormous app coming out that you will all have heard of, but they are hosting some educational courses now, including two by me. More on that later, and if you subscribe, you'll be the first to hear. All we're using today is a pen. I'm gonna be using this fountain pen, the Twisby Diamond 580 with some carbon black ink in. This is waterproof ink. Now you could use another waterproof pen, a fine liner, a few day pen, anything you like really goes. It just needs to be waterproof. I'm gonna use a, a couple of colors from here. My full set of colors is listed on my website. You can find the link to that, the supplies link down below, and a couple of brushes. And honestly, the brushes and the sizes I'm using, just not important. I've got one medium sized round brush and a sort of medium small flat brush as well. We might even make use of this tiny little size two brush. The idea today, as we said, is be a little bit minimalist. That means minimal equipment, minimal colors, minimal in how we approach our scene. And this really helps landscapes to feel less overwhelming. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna aim to complete a thumbnail a bit like these landscapes up here. So my little thumbnail is gonna be something like this at the side of my page. I'm gonna mark that off and the rest of this can be experimentation. So we have our reference photo and I'm gonna do, if this is a thumbnail, these will be, I don't know, pinky nails, micro thumbnails. And we need to just explore first, how can we really simplify a scene? The first step is just to see the really giant shapes. And the really giant shapes are pretty much the horizon line. Then there's a kind of hill coming in like this, basically a little triangle. Then there's a hill coming in kind of like this, which is another triangle. The foreground is here and we have a big tree. So we kind of got very simple shapes already. And we could probably find if we just use very, very simple hatching to delineate these a little bit, we start to actually have something which has a surprising amount of shape to it. Even if we put really simple little blades of grass here, really simple trees going along here, we kind of actually already got, you know, it's, it's obviously a little childish and simple, but it's also taken 20 seconds and it's a really simple way to now build going forward to know that we can recreate the scene. And actually it shows us that really simple things like this are great. In my newest course coming very soon on sketchloose.co.uk, we spend a whole workshop talking about the idea of this being simple and having those visual shortcuts. And it's the idea that the shortcuts don't have to look like this. For me, my trees are often these really simple marks here. They might be simple marks like these, but part of sketching is developing that visual shorthand and thumbnailing like this is a great way of working that out. So for you, does a tree need to have texture? In which case, maybe practice a few quick trees like this. Does it need to have internal texture? In which case, just work out what's the simplest way of doing that? Is that gonna be little sort of naturalistic hatching? Or are you happier doing linear hatching and, and treating it very much like a kind of a value study? Or like me, do you sometimes really just enjoy having these trees as little swirls, really getting the fluidity of them? 
and then you can hatch in between and get the kind of shape and use your line weight and variation to show the different relationships between these trees but keeping it incredibly simple this thumbnailing this is your opportunity to do that and if you want to join me on sketchloose.co.uk we go into great depth and detail about how to achieve these kind of stylistic marks but let's apply this to a slightly more slower considered thumbnail and when i say slower i mean instead of 20 seconds maybe a couple of minutes so let's actually start this time with this foreground circle Instead of treating it as a circle, why don't we treat it as a circle with texture? So we're kind of thinking about something like this little visual shortcut. And it's not quite a circle, is it? It's almost actually like a triangle coming up here. And then it's got its trunk. Now, something I like doing with these, and this is my personal preference, is actually treating big foreground elements as almost a frame to the scene. So if I hatch this out, that will remind me to keep this blank and we'll see what that looks like in this little experiment. Coming along, we can then find our grander shapes. And here, I think, because it's so distant, these shapes I'm looking at now, they're so distant. Doing these kind of textural trees is a bit nonsensical. We can't see anything in that distance. So instead, I'm gonna do my version, these little looping trees. And all I'm doing here, if I do it bigger, is doing like little loops, different sizes, all looping together. And actually, for me, I love doing this, and I think it's a rather effective way of getting distant sort of feel of trees in. Going into the far horizon line, it's less certain, so we'll just do a simple line. And then just to bring this bit across, instead of doing just a flat line, think about our shapes as having a bit of texture. So we can actually find that there's like a sticky up bit, and that's a little fence, isn't it? And then we've got these kind of little grassy knolls wiggling and wobbling all across. And then we've got more trees forming this line. We've got more trees and they can be getting smaller and smaller into the distance. And actually in this sense, we've also done a bit of perspective shrinking. So instead of going along, we're going bigger, smaller, smaller, smaller. So we're getting that perspective going off into the distance. And all in all, actually, we've now got an interesting thing we can immediately put into our less micro thumbnail <laughs> and here we can apply a normal five steps so let's let's go for it again and I actually like the order I did it in there often you might find as your micro thumbnailing or thumbnailing that the order of back to front left to right whatever it is the way that you're approaching the scene needs changing for me I actually felt that that order doing this big foreground element first worked really well so we'll just do that. We might change it, but that'll be a split second decision, not a pre-planned element. What I'm going to do is move the trunk way off to the side though, because I think there's too much of an odd gap here. But here we've got a nice frame. Then I'm going to move and we'll go to this sort of more distant um, sort of set of trees forming our triangle that cuts in here. And really just, if we just think about these simple, simple shapes, it will become easy. It takes a little while to find the shapes and feel confident applying those shapes, but it, it, it then becomes so easy. So I really encourage you to just go with this idea of shapes and see if it helps you. It might not, and you might not like the style it invokes, but if you don't give it a go, you'll never know. That wasn't supposed to be a, <laughs> a dodgy poem. It just turned out that way, unfortunately. I'm going to just change around the process a little bit. I think I liked bringing these lines in first and then I'm going to bring across our foreground, which hopefully will kind of set a little bit of how much horizon we want to pop in. I might pop in a few more little bits of texture in this foreground as well. And then we can just do that distant horizon. Now we have something pretty good, pretty, you know, reminiscent of the scene. We've built it up step by step, nothing crazy, nothing complicated, and time to splash on some colours. Now, even though these are small thumbnails, um, I'm still going to use my bigger brushes because it's still a, the, the amount of water I want on the page is still got to be a sort of good enough amount, a big enough amount. And using tiny, tiny brushes, even on a small area, will always lead to your colours just being a bit too dry. 
I haven't, I've been lazy here. I haven't let my um, ink completely dry. But again, I don't mind these things. I like the surprise and letting things flow. So here, all I'm doing, wet on wet. So hopefully you could tell this page is, is wet um, from that water. And now I'm dropping in just two colours, a bit of ultramarine and a bit of lavender. And we talked about making things minimalist. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to focus on plenty of white space. We've all already got these minimalist shapes on the page. Now we're doing minimal brush strokes. So we're going to get really soft colours, which are just, look at this amazing flow up here. We can leave this as a framing white space, or we'll maybe hatch it in later. Um, and we can just focus on, you know, not overusing our colours. So next thing, I'll just use one green. I'll use Green Appetite Genuine and see how it feels. And what I can do is just let that sort of pull forwards. So I've just brought it through this kind of field. And you know what, when you do that, you kind of recognise maybe there's something for popping a bit of brightness here. And it is yellow, isn't it, in our reference? So maybe we just pop a little bit of brightness in here. And that little bit of yellow can then also come along and fill up in there. And we've got this really interesting little composition going now. And this is how I sort of gradually move around, gradually play with those colours, little by little. Going to touch in here a little bit more of our deeper green. We've got these kind of shadowy greens off on the left here. And in the distance, in the distance, colours tend to feel more blue. Um, in the in the foreground, they feel warmer, more red. So I'm going to blue out my green here a little bit. Make this feel, just using these same blues, make this field feel more distant. And we can do little touches of that blue in other places just to balance it around. And like that, I think I can actually leave this be. I can leave this to dry. And we'll come back with our next step where we make some colours bolder and see if we can get away with just using these four colours still. And we are now pretty much dry. And I like what's happened here. We've got these flowing bits of blue. The distance definitely feels more held back. And I come in now with my slightly bigger brush and my bolder colours. Going to leave the sky, but we're going to work on things closer than that. So a little bit of that bluey green, just to pull out. You know, if you actually squint at the image, you'll find that this distant field does feel a little more blue, a little darker, a little higher value than the sky. Not more blue than the sky, but more, more value, darker. So we're going to just make that feel more, you know, more true to life. Coming forward then, equally, this next field feels a little darker than it is at the moment. And using thicker paint and also the process of layering, we can get that. And look at this, using nice water, we also get this lovely flow going through the scene. Coming forward still, we've got this deeper, darker green here with some shadow, which I'll introduce this blue to again. So we've got this shadow sort of coming in underneath the tree, haven't we? But we've also got brighter yellows. We've almost got some reds coming in here as well. But we'll see. We can always add them later. So I'd encourage you, whenever you're painting, just to go, you know, if we've set out to be a little bit minimalist, sure, we can break that rule later. But why don't we see how far we can get being a little bit minimalist? And then maybe we can do it again, or we can just change our mind at the end and add in those extra little touches. There are no rules, of course, so do what you like. But it's just a fun way to try and stick to some of those rules and see what happens. And just like that, because this is such a small painting, a thumbnail, we've got to experiment and now we can let it dry and we can come back with our ink. We've got two more things to do. One is re-solidify our shapes and add a bit more texture. That's the restructuring with ink. And then what we'll do, we will use our tiny little brush. And we'll see what we can pull out, what little bits of magic we can pull out. Perhaps some of these trees, perhaps we will use a bit of red. We'll see what we can do in a couple of minutes. And here we are, we're back and pretty much dry. So we're first going to restructure, as I said. We've got to be careful because, number one, when we put our pen back on the page, we're making lines bolder. And we're also making any line where there's watercolour, so like along here, extra bold. So need to be careful we don't overdo things. That said, this extra bit of boldness is what gives us an extra bit of structure. 
And you might, I'm sure, you can hear Betty having a good long scratch. Do you want to stop that? Good girl. Yeah. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Hello. Hello, Betty. Hello. Good girl. Anyway, back in the room. So we've got here our little tree trunk and I can increase the value as well here. And then I've got all this clear outline of the tree. And I said a couple of things to be wary of. One is the amount of ink we're laying down the second time. And perhaps, perhaps you can see that this is bolder. The other is that in places where it's wet, like if I go up here, I'll get this ink leaking into the sky. So if you've been a bit lazy like me and the, uh, the sky is still wet or there are wet patches elsewhere, you need to be careful of that, but not too worried. Because look, we can just pick that ink up again while it's still nice and wet. And also I can use that little bit of water and that little bit of blue just to come in here. Because I spot, as you're doing this, you'll spot little bits, which could do with a tiny touch of color. And then we can come back and we'll continue our restructuring. So here, I'm gonna just come in under this horizon line and make some of these trees a little bolder, give this a little more shape. And as we come closer and closer, so we get here, for example, this will be bolder still, and then less bold into the distance. And less bold over here as well. And then as we come forward, bolder and bolder. Because bold lines come forward. Bold lines sit closer to us in our vision. We've then got this kind of funny little fence. And this might be where we decide, you know what, we're going to make a little bit more of this fence. So we can do a couple of extra fence posts bring them along this edge and then have them kind of like peter out going down there and maybe we use these as an element of contrast as well so this is an opportunity to get a big load of ink on the page so we kind of it's not even hatching this is just blacking in some of these fence posts and then hopefully what we can do is give them a little bit of a sort of wiry link so this is where we're inventing stuff right we're inventing or exaggerating aspects of our scene because we can because it's our scene on the page it could have had a slightly longer uh, fence and for all we know in a different angle this reference photo does have a longer fence um, but it's okay to also just change things to make it more fun and fit our scene a little better coming along here i want this foreground line to definitely be really nice and bold we can even add a suggestion little plants and flowers and things and introduce a few more marks coming up as well here just to really get that idea of a, a foreground element there's now a lot of white space that's something i'm noticing straight away there's a lot of white space which i do like but it's like undifferentiated white space and a way i might just break that up is number one extend this horizon line along and then we can add color there number two having done that just do some very simple hatching which will flatten this white space and move it hopefully visually away from this space. That's that's what I hope this will achieve at least. And then we can probably, with that, just move on to adding some final bits of colour and we'll see, you know. I'm not going to have done this perfectly and I would love to see you sharing yours on Instagram. Tag me at Toby Sketch Loose your versions of this simple scene. Maybe you do it bigger, maybe you do it smaller. I'm sure you'll have made different decisions and I'm sure in many ways, better decisions than me as well. You know, we'll all have done different things better than one another. That's the beauty of art. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna get some specific kind of textures going on. I don't often do a lot of specific painting with my colors, but the glory of something small and simple like this is that there is room just to bring in these little more interesting textural marks. And then I think I'm gonna experiment with making some of these trees more interesting. And more interesting means making them bold and stand out. So I'm gonna try really deep green to start with. Not all of them, because I want some of them to stand out in different ways, but let's try that. And then to make them even bolder, we'll get some of our blue. And again, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to stay minimalist. So I'm trying not to use extra colours. I'm trying to keep to these four colours we've used so far. Green Apple, like Genuine, uh, Azo Yellow, Ultramarine and Lavender. And then 
seeing you know just how diverse a scene you can actually produce just with a very simple set of colours, essentially two primary colours and a couple of lazy colours. <laughs> the lazy colours being the lavender, which is just like a light blue really, and the, uh, the green appetite genuine, which I could even just have mixed from the blue and the yellow. I'm going to get a little bit of blue, as I said, just under here, because I think that will just explain this scene a little bit better. If underneath here is all sky and the last bit to do, I think the last bit to do, before we let this dry, see what happens, is a few bits of magic splashing. So just little touches, just to create a little bit of chaos and interest. I say the last bit, I already got ideas of what else I might want to do. That's a few little bright, see if I use the this paint really thick, almost like gouache, almost like acrylic paint, you can kind of create these little gouache-like opaque marks in the foreground. I think that's a bit of fun. And then they'll, we'll explain the space in this tree through a few little green splashes. Now if you think that you've splashed in the wrong place, it's gone too much, don't forget, because this is wet and watery, you can always lift them up. Now lifting them won't get rid of them completely, but it will hugely impact the intensity. So let's say I don't like these blue ones, I could lift them up a little. And if I wanted to lift them up more completely, I can come in with my brush and I can wet them. And we can scrub and just slightly soften them. For me, I'm happy with quite intense splashes. So I, I quite like this slightly chaotic feel that they produce. There's always a last touch to do though, isn't there? I think if I bring these little hatching marks down through our fence, it will feel a little more complete and even just do another sort of half hatch in between them. Not sure if that was a good idea or not, but I don't think it's ruined it. I think it's probably, probably added a little bit of extra clarity. Don't want to overdo things though. I always say this, there's always a time where you've got to go, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just sort of waffling. I'm just kind of flailing at the paper with my pen now. And at that point, it's very much time where we step away. So I'm going to put my little signature in the corner here um, and well I say signature my initials here and I love signing somewhere in my scene and that's my minimalist thumbnail done today. Four colours, we managed to stick with four colours, very similar to this, this has also got four colours and this has also got four colours so we can create a diverse range of different things with just four colours, really minimalist. If you enjoyed this then do check out these videos and subscribe it means a huge amount to my little channel. I can't explain how much it really means getting uh, each and every subscriber. And I'll see you in the next one. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.